Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. It's good to be back. I've had a few things going on in real life that needed dealing with, but I have a new studio which I'll be making a video on so look out for that and subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. Also smash the like button to let YouTube know where the good stuff is. I've long resisted getting a 3D printer, choosing to hand make things instead but I've always been interested in the idea. So when Longa reached out to me with an offer for testing out one of their models, I jumped at the chance. I watched a few YouTube videos and understand some of the basic principles involved, but other than that, I'm a complete noob when it comes to this kind of stuff. Longa sent me over the Longa Orange 30, a SLA 3D printer that is targeted to those new to the hobby. An entry level model, if you will. So, when the box arrived, I was super excited to have a look and see where this adventure would go. The printer arrived well packaged and everything that was meant to be in the box seemed to be present. There was quite a lot in the box and I was pleasantly surprised to see some filters and gloves included. In terms of quality, it's difficult to gauge as this is the first 3D printer I've ever seen in person. But my first impressions are that Everything seemed to be well built and solid, and yet nothing seemed to be over designed. You can see that the lid comes flat packed. I guess this is to keep manufacturing and shipping costs down. Different to other brands I've seen, but if it allows them to keep the price low, then I guess that can't be a bad thing. I had a quick flick through the instruction manual and realized that there was actually very little information. There are, however, some really useful instructional videos included on the USB stick supplied with the printer. These videos cover everything from basic setup and leveling the build plate to transferring your files for print. I set about building the lid and found the protective film on the acrylic incredibly hard to remove, so removing the film from four panels and the top from both faces was actually a bit of a job. Once removed, I followed one of the videos and assembled the lid. This went together pretty straightforwardly, but it did feel a bit fiddly at times. The whole thing was held together with a couple of elastic bands. In all truth, this didn't seem the most practical solution, but I guess the lid's job is to keep the dust out, so this is perfectly functional. I leveled the build plate, a sheet of paper, and just fixed the build plate in place with the allen key provided and also quickly realized that I would need some resin as well as a few other items to help process these prints. I got a cheap rubber mat from Amazon. I think this was sold as a pet eating underlay. I got some plant-based resin from Elegu. No idea if it's any good but I like the idea that it wouldn't smell too strong. Some nitrile gloves, some kitchen roll, a few Tupperware containers for cleaning. And I realized at this stage that whilst these printers are sold as plug and play, there is quite a lot of prep work that goes into this process. I turned the printer on and pressed a few buttons to see if it worked and to my untrained eye, everything seemed okay. So I loaded up one of the stock files from the USB stick, put on my gloves and added some resin. And I thought I would just see what happens. I did watch a few videos for some basic pointers and setting the build plate to the home position and then adding a little more resin so it doesn't overflow seemed like a great idea. I also found some basic recommended settings on Reddit so I added these. All very straightforward. It comes supplied with Chitubox, a, a program that lets you get your files ready to print. I won't cover that here as there are plenty of videos on YouTube to help you with this but Nothing too complicated. I pressed print and the build plate started going up and down. It seemed to be working. After watching this process for a while, mesmerized and full of anticipation, I realized that this was going to take a while. Six hours to be exact. I let the printer do its thing, which it does very quietly. So quietly, in fact, that you can barely hear it at all not much more than a computer fan. When the printing process was complete, 
I was amazed to see a grey blob hanging from the build plate. It seemed to have worked. I prepped my area and put on my safety equipment, some gloves, a respirator mask and some safety glasses as I didn't want any resin getting on me. I set the build plate in a container with some kitchen towels to soak up some of the excess resin while I prepped up the rest of my gear. But, first impressions looked pretty good. It looked like it printed nicely. Now to remove it from the build plate, I use a scraper and with some sort of strong but consistent pressure, I expertly pop it off. Luckily no harm done, I let the model soak in some isopropyl alcohol for 5 minutes and then clean this off with an old soft toothbrush. Next I put the model in a Ziploc bag with some clean IPA and put it in my ultrasonic cleaner in the hope that this would give it a really good clean. I got these tips from some online research and this definitely made the process a lot longer than it seems here. Always stopping and watching a few more videos and you know kind of just getting a feel for it. I dried the model and then set up my pro curing station, a battery powered turntable and my fiance's UV nail station jerry rigged into something workable. I had no idea if this would work but it seems to have worked great. Once cured, I could get a real look at the model for the first time, and I was truly amazed at the quality. And I've had a few 3D prints before that I'd ordered on Etsy, and whilst they look good, they were often full of layer lines and you could really see that they were printed. I was expecting the same sort of quality here, but couldn't see any layer lines at all. The details seemed crisp, and even the little teeth inside the model's mouth printed. Overall, I would say, for a first try, this was an overwhelming success. I gave it all a quick zenithal prime with my airbrush, just to boost the shadows and highlights, and a huge smile spread across my face. The results were way better than I'd imagined, and I can't wait to paint this guy up. My head is still spun from the whole idea that, from a file and a bit of resin, you can slowly watch something being created from nothing magic. I can't wait to experiment further and really play with it. Sure this process was a bit scary at first, there are many steps to follow and it's easy to get confused but none of the steps alone are particularly difficult and like anything new it gets way easier once you get more familiar with the process. I would like to send a huge shout out to Vivian at ZBanks for making this all happen and thank you to Longa for sending me this great little printer. If you would like to see how I incorporate these into my builds, then you can subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos. Leave a like, and please, if you have any tips and pointers for me when it comes to 3D printing, then I would love to hear them in the comments below. Thank you all for joining me today. I hope you found it interesting, and I'll catch you in the next one.